Hi everyone, it's Max here. Um, and welcome to Max's Snack Talk, a podcast where we talk about marketing uh, in a small, in a small way. And we're going to get even snackier today because my guest is James Ealing from Marketing for Restaurants. Hello, uh, g'day. And uh, James ha- is one of my favourite uh, restaurant marketers in Melbourne, and he has one of the best secret. One of his podcasts, The Secret Source, is one of the world's most popular restaurant podcasts. So you should definitely check it out. Yes, yeah, it's um, uh, it's interesting. We now get more customers from the UK and the US than we do in Australia. Come on, Australia, get behind it. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> um, and what one thing that you're a big, a uh, big uh, proponent, big proponent of on your podcast, you talk about people should take advantage of Google My Business for restaurants. Yes. Yep. And why do you say that? So. Uh, it, it's a key ranking factor. It, there's two reasons. One, it's a ranking factor. So, um, if there's, uh, if you're using Google My Business, then it's actually something that you've got some sort of input in. Um, we find we've had people who've come to us and said, you know, uh, we're really struggling, and then you do a Google search for them, and you have a look and got Google My Business, and it says the place is permanently closed. Oh. Now, as a competitor. I can do that to any restaurant I like because it says yeah. suggest an update. So if you're not controlling that, then and you've got someone who and you know I, I think it's really unfair that people do that. Having said that, there are people yeah. who are struggling to save their house. Um, restaurant owners have committed suicide over the last twelve months over the pressure from COVID and all of that sort of thing. It's a real knife fight. So it's not the right thing to do, but I see why people do it. Um, so you've got to protect yourself from that. Second, it's a ranking factor. So when people are looking for a vegetarian restaurant in a suburb, if the Google My Business is in there and if you're talking about vegetarian, then, you know, you're going to pop higher. Uh, and thirdly, people search on, it feeds into maps and people search on maps, you know. And, and it's free. And right now it's free. It's free for now. <laughs> yes. Free. Yep. So as opposed to a lot of the, the, the social medias, which are, are free but are really paid to play mostly, uh, you know. Uh, Absolutely. Or, you know. Facebook is pay to play. Um, and that's one of the biggest mistakes that people make with Facebook is the first one is not doing anything on Facebook. The second thing is just putting content up. And I've seen cases where a restaurant spending $5,000 a month on content creation and zero on budget and getting no response. Exactly. And uh, so I saw, uh, so uh, there was an article uh, I saw on SEO Roundtable recently. I'm going to share it in a separate tab um, because it's kind of interesting. It is, let's get this Chrome tab. So here we go. That's nice. Uh, So the local pack is now showing menu highlights. So when you're searching now on Google, for French toast, it's now coming up with French toast menu highlights, menu highlights, and pictures of French toast. Absolutely. And, you know, I was thinking that's a really interesting, you know, I I mean, we've seen a little bit before, but they're now going big into like people searching for menu items. And, you know, that may, those, those photos, some of them have been submitted by Google local guides, like Google photographer contributors, some of them for the restaurant. Look, by the looks of them, they look like, they look at least the top two look like uh, some um, contrib- contributions from the public, and it's amazing that you know that now you they have that sort of input. So I think that the issue that I've got here is that it's very hard for new restaurants uh, because of the fact that um, we see uh, you know particularly if you're going for best, which is what um, that's a key t- uh, search term you know, best restaurant in a suburb, Uh, that's usually uh, heavily contested between probably about a quarter of the restaurants. Others just sort of try and fall into it by um, a a process of elimination from other restaurants that don't really care about ranking for best. But uh, you you can see that it's interesting. The the one at the top, 4.3, then 4.1. The 4.8 down the bottom has only got 64 reviews. So... Yeah. Now, the the thing that's really tough about this, and and we had a restaurant uh, uh, meeting uh, on Monday, it was, uh, 
new restaurant. They've been in business for probably three months. Uh, website went live a, a month ago. Uh, and you can see week on week, the traffic's building. There's a really, uh, so part of that is Google getting uh, more used to the to the restaurant being there. But the other component of it is their, their reviews. Uh, Google reviews tend to be the most honest because of the fact that they're a little bit more, that they're harder to game. Um, you know, down the bottom, you've got, so, you know, your trip advisors. Facebook is can be pretty uh, hit and miss as well. Google tends to be fairly accurate, though. I think that it's about anonymity. So anyone, anyone who's anonymous on the internet is just like can just do, you know, they, they're happy to trash it. But if you've got your personal name attached to it, you're going to be more polite and truthful if you're using your real identity, I think. Oh, ab absolutely. And I think, and so you shouldn't be anonymous. You know, my thing is if I don't like a restaurant, I'm going to, the biggest thing I'll do is I just won't go back. Um, and on top of that, if you ask me for a good restaurant, that won't be in the list. It'll be somewhere that's better. It's up to the restaurant, you know, and it on, on the very, very rare occasion that I've said something nasty about a restaurant, it's always been to the restaurant. It yeah, goes, me too, me too. I've only, I've only done like, and I've done like hundreds of reviews. I've only done very few one stars and I really, I, I probably shouldn't have done, I don't know. I just feel like it's too, it's damaging someone's business and I just don't feel right about it. But, you know, um, so yeah, I, uh, but I often give most of my feedback privately because that way they should, they can improve. Um, but I, so we had a, uh, a customer, this is probably going back about six or seven years ago, uh, a restaurant in Sydney. Um, it was kind of cheap fine dining French. So for course, sorry, you say cheap and fine dining. Yeah. So that was about $75 for four courses. Um, and the food was That's really, not really cheap. That's not cheap. Well, I mean, oh. it's obviously more expensive, but it's, I wouldn't call that. Well, that's that's four four courses for a degustation, and it was it was extremely good food. Um, okay. So I thought, from a value point of view, I thought it was really really good. Yeah. Um, and they had struggled significantly. Uh, you know, partially with restaurant profitability. There's no surprises there. A lot of people struggle with that. Um, but one of the things that killed them, well, well and sorry, that's that's a bit sad. Um, one of the things that really was devastating to them was the reviews that they got. And some of them were really personal attacks, particularly on the owner. Uh, and they, it was a husband and wife team and they committed suicide. That's so and sad. I, well, I felt like contacting those people and saying, you know, are you happy now? Like you'll never have to worry about going to that restaurant again. I know it must have been really, really upsetting to you to go to that restaurant. Because they were really vitriolic, uh, and, and were I don't think individuals or was it a campaign? Uh, I they were in a fairly colourful, you know. They, was it I think it was, it was you think it was coordinated? I mean, do you think? Uh, I, I think potentially there were some competitors in there, and I think it was just some people who. You know, you, you see bad service, whereas the restaurant owner might see I've got two people sick. Um, I need to replace the chef and I'm, you know, so I'm doing four people's jobs at once tonight, you know. You know, yeah, it's, I mean, I got, a, I got, I went to this new restaurant in Melbourne, absolutely delicious, um, great, great food. Um, and I, um, I, I made, I made an Instagram reel about it and the restaurant and the owner liked it. And then he contacted me and said, oh, can you do a Google review? I'm getting all of these negative reviews on, um, on Google, I, I've just opened my restaurant. I don't, you know, this is not, and um, and I was like, and, and, and he says, I think that some of them are, are not quite, it's that somebody's with an agenda. And I looked at them and, and like, I was like, yeah, that's correct. Cause like, there's all these like one review, two review, new accounts, things. And only, they've only just re done reviews now and they're not authentic. There's some sort of weird campaign going on and I'm gonna help them because that's not quite right. Well, so my favorite one was, um, uh, one of our customers had a review um, and it was, uh, they were in Fitzroy and it said, you know, oh, I went there uh, on Tuesday night. The food was okay. Uh, the service I thought was a little bit inattentive and uh, there are, uh, the price was a bit expensive. For what it was, there's better places to eat in Fitzroy than here. And he replied back. How many stars? How many, how many stars? Uh, it was like a two star. It wasn't oh. massively offensive, but the thing was, the chef replied back, and this was gold. Thank you very much for your review. We open next week. <laughs> so, 
the one of their competitors could not even wait for the doors to open before they stuck the boot in. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, you know, I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to finish off on reviews, but I just think that I think that maybe with review platforms, they should ban anonymous reviews. You need to put your name to it. You can't review unless you put your put your name to your review. I reckon. And you need to be able to back it up. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now these photos. Now I had yes. I had a suggestion for for new restaurants or starting up or any restaurant. So most restaurants they've got all of their photos. They usually have a photo shoot with to get on the delivery platforms. Yep. Uh, or, or to get on Restolo, formerly Frollo. Yes. Um, and images <laughs> images sell. So um, you know you can actually upload every single image to your Google Maps to your Google Maps. You can yes. add, and then you can put you can tag it with your menu item. So you could put up your French toast. You can put every menu item online and tag it so that um, so that it comes up uh, when people are searching for those menu items. So another one of the big SEO uh, killers. So uh, we we often say that SEO is the silent killer um, because Google never sends you a report on all of the people who didn't find your restaurant. Or didn't find your website. They only find they they send you a report that says this is how many people found your website, never how many didn't. So there is AI out there, but Google don't really use it too much, and it certainly doesn't filter into SEO. Um, for French toast, you, you can work out what French toast is, but Google really likes it if this is tagged with French toast. So. In the in in your images on the website, if you've got an image gallery or on the menu, it should be tagged. You know, you need that meta description, uh, the um, the meta description all filled in for the image to say, yeah. um, "This is French toast." And it's they've the now best. started giving local. They've get, started giving local guides points for um, giving descriptions to their images. Hundred percent, because this is what they're trying to do. Like, and because I've I've always said. <laughs> Like a lot of people will look for a cuisine, not because they like, want the cuisine, it's because of the actual menu item that they're looking for. This is why your menu is one of your big sales, to, uh, it's your most important salesperson. And too often, which is why, so now it is only going to reinforce the fact that you need to be doing menu engineering. You need to be having that really complicated uh, process of going through you know, is this something that I can't sell for a large amount of dollars, but it will draw people in? Um, you know, how are we going to try and extract the maximum value out of each of the customers that come in? Because uh, sometimes you're going to need those plow horse items in there just because people, if people are searching for it. And now that Google's making it easier to find it, you're going to appear up in a map search because depending on whether or not you've got a, a menu item. Yeah, yeah. I, I no think pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, but it's also like you don't want to have too many menu items because your kitchen can't handle it. You know, it's always that balance, or you always want to cut the bottom five percent of the menu and and, and, and and every year and try and bring in new dishes. Um, and you know, help you know that you can be on the algorithm, and you know, uh, Google will find you for that new item. So, absolutely, yeah. yep. Um, yeah, I um, I I also saw <clears throat> um. I'm going to share. Uh, so a new thing was that Wix. Uh, Wix. Uh, I'm going to share a different tab. Wix are now integrating with Google My Business. Wix, if you have a Wix website for your restaurant, uh, yeah, they're now they're now integrating with GMB, so you can update your listings from GMB if you have a Wix website. Yeah. So uh, there's a couple of things with Wix. Um, it, it, it isn't S very SEO friendly. And like, I, I think um, if I think back to customers that we've worked with, I think the most beautiful websites that we've ever seen is in Wix. Uh, having said that, the most successful websites that we've ever seen aren't Wix. And um, we we had a really, really, cus a really successful customer on the Gold Coast a few years ago. Now, sadly, their partnership broke up and the restaurant uh, uh, died. Um, but their website, we never used their website as a testimonial because it looked pretty awful. Because they played oh, around, they played oh. around with it. 
it was a seafood restaurant. Their logo was like a cup of coffee. There was a whole heap of random stuff on there. <laughs> oh, no. But um, they had a seafood platter uh, that was epic. They had images of the seafood platter and they uh, we spent a lot of time on SEO for best seafood platter Gold Coast. So... Uh, I, I was up at, for a conference. And seafood, and seafood platters, they usually, they can go for $150 to $200, $300. So that's a big sale, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember uh, there was two of us from the company. We're up for a convention on the Gold Coast. And I, I texted him and said, hey, mate, can we come in for, uh, for dinner tonight? And he said, yeah, sure. Uh, can you come in at five? We're really busy. And it's like, hey, dude, it's, it's me, you know. You, like, yes, I can come in at five. But and so we left at probably about quarter to seven. And the place by then, or by six, the place was full. Excellent. And the place next door to it, uh, which was half the price, had like 10 people in there. Really, that SEO component and like the story, the, the, the meaning behind that story is the fact that the website was just awful. But the <laughs> SEO, People saw it. They saw the image of the platter, and they thought. And it was a, it was a, it was a perfect photo in that it didn't look too perfect. You could tell that yeah, it was from yeah. the restaurant. There were people there enjoying it. It that photo really told the whole story, and like literally that photo sold over a million dollars worth of seafood. Yeah, um, image imagery imagery sells. The imagery is so important with restaurants. It's so important. Exactly. Yep. So yeah, the yeah, SEO. Yes, yeah, I, I got would, them. Yeah, they, I, they were saying, you know, oh, uh, you know, people need now how to make need to make their dishes more beautiful for Instagram and social media. I was like, man, before social media, people still wanted to eat delicious food. I don't know if that's true. Like, people always wanted to have delicious food, and it always needed to look good. I don't know about that. <laughs> so, in, in any decent kitchen, the you know, when you we've got stuff coming out over the past, you eat with your eyes first. Mm. So, if it doesn't look good, it shouldn't go out. Like that's, um, you know, that's one of those those basic basic um, e elements. You know, you you want the stuff to look decent before people are you know are going to eat it. Well, and so uh, there's nothing new there. People are paying a premium. They're not going to make it look as nice at home. You may you got to give them a show, dinner and a show. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Okay. Well, why, um, James, why don't you do a bit of, talk a little bit about marketing for restaurants? I'll talk a bit about my thing, and we'll wrap it up. Yeah, sure. So marketing for restaurants, we help restaurants. That we really, what we help you do is to understand uh, the story that you need to tell for the customers. So we break down all of the target markets that you've got into, into niches, and then we come up with a story that's individualized around each and every one of those niches. We've got a series of products to, our, our whole thing is helping you find more customers and turn them into repeat customers. So you know, we've got online ordering products, booking products that's done. I think it's like done fifty million dollars worth of bookings now. Uh, that's completely free, um, which is a bit of madness. But yeah, it is what it is. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just um, we're really passionate about helping small restaurant owners um, be better at telling their story because there's some epic small restaurants out there. You know, particularly ones who, who aren't from Australia. They're coming out. They're bringing they're bringing food that you don't normally get to see. You know, the the food of their nation. Uh, it's really exciting. I think it's great to be able to help those people to you know to build successful businesses. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And on the other hand, I, I'm working for Digital Maps, and we help uh, restaurants with multiple locations. We help them get found on Google Maps and use Google My Business to the best of their ability to bring more buns on seats. Uh, so check out James's at Marketing for Restaurants. Check out uh, digitalmaps.com uh, and for all your SEO uh, and SE search engine management for large chains. Uh, James, thanks for being part of the podcast, and uh, look. Uh, no worries. Follow up. We'll see you all next time. Thanks, Max. Bye.